Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Medium One, where we will have actually uh, three talks in a row. Uh, there is some confusion in the app, so I have to make you aware of that, that you know what is coming up. Uh, first, we will have the block that is called Lexicographic Software, block six, and that will be the two talks that are also in the app. Then we will continue, well, without a break, like on schedule, to uh, language modeling. And we will have the talk that was um, expected there. And the last one, uh, lexicographic methodology and workflow, block four uh, at 12.30 has been canceled. So please note that there will not be, this talk will not be happening in medium one. Um, we are all set up for our first presenter. Um, I welcome to the stage uh, Stephen Barrett, um, who will be talking about uh, an end-to-end, corpus-to-entry solution for historical lexicography. Welcome. Thank you. So, Valcha, as we say in Scottish Gaelic, um, welcome and thank you for coming. Um, before I begin, I should uh, mention the obvious that I am Scottish. I come from Glasgow and Glasgow has a reputation for um, churning out people who speak too quickly. So I'm going to try and speak as slowly as I can, but please do stop me when I get too fast. Uh, I, I will not be offended at all. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Menema today, which is a prototype um, that we've been working on with our historical lexicographers. And first of all, I really do need to credit my co-worker, um, Mark McConville, who really thought this whole thing up. Mark is a computational linguist, uh, one of the smartest people I've ever met. And uh, he's a data manager for Fackler and Gaelic, uh, which I'm going to describe a bit more in a moment, a historical dictionary. And he's also the systems architect for the prototype that I'm going to show you. And his vision, as it says here, is to provide a full end-to-end -end system for historical lexicography. So from the very first corpus excerpting right through to a full dictionary is really what we're aiming to work with, to, to, to come up with eventually. And this is the prototype. Uh, I'm Stevie. I'm a software developer trained in Java and Python, but uh, for the last 25 years, so I've been a real Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP developer. And I was hired to work on the dictionary, sorry, Digital Archive of Scottish Gaelic, which is DASC, um, which its primary aim was to provide the corpus for the dictionary, um, which is called Corpus Gaelic, which I'll talk about in a moment. And ultimately, um, then work full time on Fackler Gaelic, the historical dictionary. So Fackler Gaelic is really the Oxford English Dictionary, or will be the Oxford English Dictionary of Scottish Gaelic. So it's a dictionary on historical principles, um, looking at the, the, whole his the, the whole evolution of Gaelic in Scotland from the Middle Ages right through till about 2020, 2021. It's an inter-university project. So with ourselves at the University of Glasgow, with Strathclyde, University of Edinburgh, University of St Andrews, the University of Aberdeen, and Salmo Rostic, which is the Gaelic College on Sky. And we ourselves, Mark and myself, as I said, are based at the University of Glasgow. So the corpus that we used um, is a 30 million word corpus, as I said, spanning the Middle Ages right through to 2021. So it's a relatively small corpus because Scottish Gaelic is a relatively small language. And as I said, it represents the history or should represent the entire history of, of, the, of the language. And it's currently been delivered using Corpus Workbench, uh, a tool some of you may be familiar with. It's a fantastic tool. Um, uh, and we use a very heavily customized version of CQP Web created by Dr. Andrew Hardy at the University of Lancaster. And again, it's a fantastic piece of software um, that sits on top of um, Corpus Workbench and allows you um, to do a whole lot of corpus analysis. So we've used that and, and heavily, as I said, heavily customized it. And we've been using that for about 10 years on Corpus Megalic. 
And the, the corpus itself is fully public, publicly accessible. It's not just for use by lexicographers. It's used a lot by the Gaelic community in Scotland. So why did we then um, move from just having corpus in Gaelic to minima, or the prototype of minima? As it says here, these tools are fabulous. The tools we are using are wonderful tools. I would heartily recommend them to anyone. In fact, I have recommended them to people today here. But historical lexicographers need an awful lot more than just simple access to a corpus. Indeed, any lexicographers do. Of course they do. So there's also the problem that the customizations that we introduced to CQP Web are getting very old, and we would need to then reintroduce them in a newer version. So it was becoming more and more out of date the more we used it. And as I said it before, corpus searching is just one small element of the lexicographer's job. So we really thought that given the state that software is in just now, there's no reason why we couldn't really do a cradle to grave, if you'll excuse, excuse that analogy, um, tool for the whole process. So that was really what the idea of this prototype that was developed over the course of about three years um, was for, to see whether this would work. So those of you who worked in historical lexicography will probably recognize these. These are, these are what, um, these are bits of paper. I don't know if anyone remembers paper. Um, these are it's like index cards that historical lexicographers used from the 1950s onwards to excerpt from real books. I remember, yeah, some of you might remember books. Um, so you can see, for example, here you've got the actual attestation of the word form. Uh, you've got the actual uh, dilemma, so on and so forth. Very standard. So we started with this idea of modeling these slips and allowing the lexicographers to have a digital, uh, a digital analogy of these slips within Menema. And this is ultimately what we started with. So anyone who knows Twitter Bootstrap will recognize that this is just out of the box. Twitter Bootstrap, we did no design work. So I'm, I'm, putting, I'm saying this now, there's no design put into this whatsoever. I'm not a designer, uh, and neither of us are. Um, so we just wanted to really prove whether or not this, that, that, that the system could work, and if it did, we'll get a designer in to make it look nice later. But really, this gives you a, a, a very clear idea of the distinct um, elements that we're looking at. So the slips, for example, um, they exist within this collection, collection up here. We'll have a look at it in a moment. And this is you know, a quick look at the first few texts in the corpus. Once again, the key, the key thing here for historical lexicographers or dates, um, you see the actual text names themselves and obviously the authors. And all these are hyperlinks, so you can look at biographies. You can, but the key thing is you can actually click through to the text and then have a look at what the text looks like, both in terms of the transcription over here and, of course, the original scan of the text itself. So the lexicographer can compare the two. The lexicographer here has done a search for the word curve, which means tree or branch. Uh, and it's highlighted, and they can then check it against, check it against this, uh, this, this, this uh, scan here. And then they can also, once they've decided that it is what they want, then add a digital slip here just by clicking on this link. We'll come back to that in a moment. But obviously, reading through the corpus isn't the way that lexicographers work. They're probably going to search. So we've created a relatively um, full, fully featured search engine here. Uh, the key things, again, for historical lexicography are being able to search by date or date range. Um, but in, in Scottish Gaelic, one of the important things is being able to search based on geography as well, because there are very distinct forms of Gaelic. Um, for example, the Gaelic of the Isle of Lewis is entirely, well, very different from the Gaelic from Perthshire. Uh, so that's a very, very important thing for historical lexicographers of Gaelic to be able to do. So a whole number of things that we've, we've added in there to the search. And then once you've done your search, you get what's very familiar to you all probably, uh, very, very straightforward concordance lines here. Uh, and then once again, as you'll see throughout the system, this option of adding, adding a slip whenever you find a specific attestation or citation that you wish to use. I'd like to also just quickly draw your attention to this other view that we've also added. So in addition to this concordance view, there's this dictionary view, which then takes the head word and breaks it into different word forms. And then you can look at the different 
word forms, citations or attestations, and then add a slip for those specific ones, which might be of more use in certain cases uh, for the lexicographers. They quite like that view. And then when you do add a slip, this is the kind of thing that you're looking at. So up here, you've got a citation. Um, the initial citation is automatically generated um, based on roughly on a, on a very rough concordance, but can be fully edited, as you can see in a moment. And then you've got your morphological and syntactic information here. And then the senses that you can possibly um, choose for or add to, if you like. And then um, down here, <laughs> very small little on its own, uh, a, 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 this is a pile, not a sense, that's been created by the lexicographer. So again, we've tried to, oops, we've tried to uh, maintain the workflow that the historical lexicographers and paper are used to in terms of piles. So this, this could c contain any number um, of uh, slips and could be named anything. It doesn't need to be a sense. It could be something like look at later or check down the line or it's purely for administrative purposes. Um, so it can be used in any way that the lexicographers like. And then once you've actually decided, once we've actually come to work with the citation itself, this is what it looks like. You can adjust the context very quickly. So you can, for example, create a very short form um, context or a, more, or, or a longer sense context as here, or even just a draft or working context. So you can have any number of these and any number of translations for these coming down, coming down the list. And, and they get quite long sometimes, like topographers. Also here, I don't have time, I didn't have time to put it in, but you can do any number of editorial emendations in here as well. So you can click on any word and do deletions or insertions or you know, any, any type of that kind of editorial work that you might want to do. And that will be reflected in the slip throughout the whole system. And then this is what a collection of slips for the word Kruv looks like. For this specific uh, lexicographer, Ola has created a whole load of slips for Kruv. You can see there are any, I'm not quite sure how many we've got, 65 um, slips for this particular um, headword. Uh, and again, clicking on here uh, will bring up the view of, of the actual slip, which looks like that. Again, quite similar. We want to make it as similar or familiar to the lexicographers as possible. So it's very similar to the, the, the card index that they were used to working with before. But you, you can't immediately then go in and edit that slip to your heart's content. And as you can see, you can quickly search up here. Um, you can search on head word, word form, parts of speech, whoever has created the slip, all sorts of features are, are available there. And again, for familiarity, although it's not that widely used, you have the option of printing your slips, so you can put them back onto that old thing paper, once again, if you like. Or indeed, you can just generate a PDF if you do want to stay within the, the digital domain. These could be exported, of course, to any type of format that, that, that the lexicographers might want. And this is one of the key aspects now of Menema and its, and its, word, and its um, excuse me, prototype, is that Menema automatically generates entries, or skeleton entries, if you like, at this stage. So if you look for the word curve, and it's, you decided it's, it's a noun, and you tag it as such in the slip, and it has, it has, Menema doesn't recognize that, it will automatically generate an entry for Kruv as a noun. If, on the other hand, you, you add a slip where Kruv and noun have already have an entry, it will, of course, then add that slip to the corresponding entry. So it's an automatic process. Now, that's not to say you can't edit it. If you then go back and change that slip and decide, oh no, that, that Kruv there is not actually being used as a noun, then that will automatically adjust to take account of, what, of the changes. So entries are, or skeleton entries, are automatically generated as soon as you create slip. And then when you look at an entry, just now, as I say, it is a very much a skeleton. This is the, the, work, in, the work, very much a work in progress. Uh, and then you click on the actual citations. For this word, there's curve, which is the uh, lenited form of curve. And again, you're getting the the specific um, attestation that you might want. 
it would default to form here if it had a form citation, but the, the lexicographer has only drafted it so far. And again, you can have a look at the slip. Uh, you can see the word in context. You can see the translation. And you can do it for all these, all these different forms. You can then move on to senses. Uh, and again, this is, this is very, very basic. Um, and this is something that we can easily work on where we plan, for example, for this to be a drag and drop uh, type, type of interface. But just now, it works. I mean, these, these little arrows, are, they're a little, little bit hard work. You can move a sense up, you can move a sense down, you can make a sense a subsense, or you can make a subsense a super sense. Uh, that's all very, very straightforward. And like I say, we will implement drag and drop when we come more to the user interface side of things. And also, when you actually click on sense, you could add a subsense here as well and actually edit the name of a specific sense. And similarly, down here, if you decide you want a brand new sense that isn't already tagged in the system, you can do that from here too. And this is really just, the, the lexicographers decided they wanted to see all their, all their piles here as well, which makes perfect sense. And again, just to remember that these piles are completely arbitrary. The lexicographer can create piles, name them whatever they like, and they can put whatever they like in them. It's purely for administrative purposes. Uh, and they can have as many of them as they like as well. So this is how they can arrange, arrange those and uh, see which slips are in those piles and then assign them to senses um, as, as required. And then again, all the slips for this specific entry are available within, within, that within the entry itself. So you can actually search through those. The lexicographers find this very, 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 very helpful. Um, this is something they asked for, which we hadn't thought they would need. Um, but it, yeah, it's proved to be very, very popular. And I, once again, you're seeing, seeing that throughout the system, wherever you go, you, you get this kind of link where you can immediately see the slip that the, the lexicographer has created. So in terms of the entry, this is obviously quite clearly the last thing we did to prove that the concept could work. Uh, ultimately, the entries you know, would be much more fancy, they'd be much more editable, there'll be a much more user, user input given to this. But this, is, as I say, is really just a proof of concept at this stage. Also, it's worth mentioning at this point that Initially, we started off, obviously, with Fackler and Gaelic, but then it became obvious that other projects were very keen on using this system. So there are other projects that have their own workspaces. Um, it's a grammar project, a project called Biaradin, one in medieval manuscripts, all of which use the same corpus, but have their own slips and their own entries and their own users. So they're distinct systems, all using the same corpus and all using the same software uh, underneath it all. So, Overall, um, I'm happy to stand up here and say that they love it. So I wouldn't be here otherwise, to be honest. <laughs> I, don't, I just wouldn't have bothered coming. Um, so our director of lexicography is over the moon, um, really, with what, with what we've achieved. So we're very happy about that, as is the project's advisory board. Um, and it's, it has proven that a digital system like this can, can take, take the place of the sort of more traditional uh, index card, paper, te text approach. Also, we've had other, other projects, um, particularly Celtic language projects, who want to use this system uh, when it's fully fledged as, as their dictionary writing system, exerting and dictionary writing system. Um, but as you've seen, it still requires a lot of work to fully make it end to end. We feel we've proved the concept. Now it's time to actually rebuild it. And also, we do have problems um, in terms of the speed um, with, with, with our search. So the beta, which we're now working on, um, which I've started working on about six months ago, means fully rewriting the whole system from scratch. Um, now that we know that it works, we, we want to do it as properly as we can. So that involves me fully um, recoding the whole thing. We also read, redid the corpus completely in, in light touch TEI so that it can be properly tagged when it comes into the corpus. The corpus that we currently use is not tagged, which is interesting. And the issues with, with the speed, we feel that we can, we, we can now address, perhaps using um, one of these options here, um, possibly still sticking with Corpus Workbench, because Corpus Workbench is super fast, and we might well be able to use it under the, under the hood, accessing it ourselves. And yeah, so the full version, as I said, will also, will, will also deliver the full dictionary writing experience um, for, for the lexicographer and full XML support. 
And importantly, the system will be deployed to the cloud and then accessed via software as a service. So it will be able to be easily modularized and therefore used by other historical dictionary projects. Uh, so that's really the, the, the model that we're looking at is software as a service, which makes sense, we feel, uh, in the current climate. So just to mention, um, I don't get to go home yet. Uh, I will be here uh, if anyone wants to chat about this a bit later on. I'll be, here this, I'll be around this afternoon after lunch. Um, so feel free to get in touch if you would like to have a look at it. I'm happy to, happy to give you a look. Um, or as please, also, please do get in touch. That's my email address. Please take a note of it if you'd like to. But that's it. I hope I haven't gone too quickly. Uh, I, did get, I did accelerate a bit there towards the end, so apologies. Well, was that clear? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it was very clear. Uh, it was also perfectly timed. And uh, as a chair, I thank you for that as well. <laughs> um, questions? Yes, uh, please. I will, uh, I will actually. Yeah. Thank you very much. This sounds fascinating. I also want to congratulate you not on the, only on the software, but also on your balls to come to the home of the sketch engine and extol the virtues of CWV. <laughs> I should, so I should mention, it, uh, it was inspired in part by Sketch Engine. I That's should have mentioned true. that during the talk. Sketch Engine was inspirational, yes. Yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding the technical interface. So, well, the, the technical side, but uh, rather from, from the other end. So, uh, is this something that somebody can download and implement right away? No. Okay. No. This is this is server side software. So so. No no no. I mean I mean uh, by somebody I mean somebody who has like a Linux machine and SSH and every and, and all that stuff. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Conceivably. Yes. 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 Conceivably, it could it could could work that way. Yeah. But as I say, we're ultimately the way we're going is as software as a service. So we'll actually be hosting it, and people would use it that way. But yeah. I mean, there's no reason because it's it's built in open source principles. There's no reason why yeah you couldn't do that. Okay, so if I wanted to implement it somewhere, I'll just get in touch with you and we can discuss all the details. Please do, yeah. yeah. Please and do. the second question is, what do you mean by lightweight TEI? Pardon? You said you use lightweight TEI as mm -hmm. annotation for the corpus. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, by lightweight, we really do mean just lightweight. So, that, I mean, just textual information in the header um, of the XML document. And then really just marking up um, line groups for, for, for verse, uh, words themselves, um, and uh, parts of speech, obviously, uh, lemmas are automatically generated by lemmatizer. That's about it, because right. that's all we want. All right, good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, we have another one. Yeah. Uh, sorry, maybe I'm asking the same thing, but in, in fact, you both of you was very fast, so I didn't understand. <laughs> Is it an open source software? Can I use it for my um, project or not? We, we haven't created a license for it yet. So we, we, yeah, so that's probably what, how I should have answered the previous question. Uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, that, that's down to the University of Glasgow and not me. Uh, really to decide, uh, and I think they are currently discussing how, 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 whether it will be open source licensed. Um, so I, 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 right now, right now, I, I couldn't, I couldn't give it to you uh, without negotiating with them first. But if there's interest, as there, as there seems to be, then I could certainly, I'm certainly happy to take it back to them. Thank you. Uh, um, was somebody wanted to ask anything here, or did I miss? No. Okay, then we have a question here. Uh, thank you. This is a more, um, more a question from the editorial perspective. Uh, uh, I'm interested in making the slips from, straight from the corpus data and then being able to edit them kind of at will. Um, is there then a link back to the corpus from a slip that's yes. where the content's been edited so you can check that errors haven't been introduced or something like that? Yes, yes. That is fully, it's fully linked back to the corpus itself. The, the, the corpus itself isn't, isn't marked or changed, um, but yeah, all, all, all the references and all, yeah, uh, all, all the slips go, are referenced, hyperlinked straight back to the corpus. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Maybe we can squeeze a sh another short question in. Not at this moment. Uh, so let's thank the speaker again.